Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In episode 41, I talked a little bit about how my glare shield didn't quite fit correctly on the airplane. And if I rivet, or if I clicoed all of these holes around the panel, then the holes around the firewall didn't line up. So I just happened to have a four foot by six foot sheet of the exact same material. So I decided to make my very own custom glare shield panel. To make this new panel, I took my 4x6 sheet of aluminum and I put the original panel on top of it and drilled all of the holes except the ones that would go on the firewall. And that's what you see here. Once it's clicoed in place, obviously I need to mark the edges, so I just use a sharpie to trace it. I'll explain this just a little bit later, but I'm adding an extra about an inch to the front of the skin. So as I trace it here, I just have this little wooden block as a spacer to get the extra inch on the front, on the firewall side. There's a couple of reasons why I wanted to make my own custom uh, glare shield. One of them is because this piece right here, this section, is what wraps around this tube right here. And when I test fit this before, it wasn't quite long enough to wrap around this tube. So as you can see, when I trace this outline here, I just added a little bit more to it. It may be too much, uh, which is fine, because if it's too much, I can always trim it a little bit later. The other reason is I wanted to make the front end a little bit longer. You can see the distance here between the hole and the end of the, the aluminum. And that's the part that goes up here. That hole goes right here. And you know maybe you can tell this is a lot greater distance than this. So the glare shield will only come out to maybe about here. And I saw posted somebody else that's building a Super Duty. Uh, they showed a picture with their cowling on and then the glare shield on, and the, the cowling actually didn't come back far enough, so there's a little bit of a gap right here. Now, they did have, they're, they're using the unpanel, so their glare shield is only like this big. So it could be totally different than, than mine. Like this might be plenty long enough to go under the cowling. Even though I have my cowling coming on the way here, even if I had it right now, it wouldn't matter because without the engine installed, I don't really know where that cowling is going to mount. So I figured I'd just be safe. I just added, you know, about an inch and a quarter here all the way around to the front. And again, if it's too much later, after I fit this to the fuselage, if this is too much, I can just trim it again. But I figured I'd just add some extra now just to have it there, just in case there would be a little gap between here and the cowling. So. This is all ready to cut out now. I've also traced this right here so I know where to cut. So everything's traced all the way around. Again, you can see I added about an extra half an inch to here. Uh, so it's ready to cut out. I have removed the original glare shield panel from here and you can see the outline and you can see where all the holes are match drilled. Now, of course, I didn't drill the holes up front where the firewall goes because those are the ones that weren't lining up properly. So I left all those holes blank and then once I fit it to the airplane I can actually measure and drill those holes perfectly. So let's get this cut out. And of course, it is physically impossible to work with sheet metal without slicing your finger. Thank you. 
Well, here is the panel cut out. And one of the things I do when I'm cutting out sheets of aluminum with the shears, I don't try to cut on the line because you can see how it kind of messes up the edge a little bit. So I cut it a little bit bigger. And then what I'll do is I'll go back and cut on the line with a band saw where I can get a really nice cut without it sort of crinkling the edge. I didn't film me cutting it out on the bandsaw, but here it is, mostly cut out. Still needs a little trimming. Now you might have guessed the next step is to use a file and clean up all of the edges as well as round off any sharp 90 degree corners. Now in this area here, I couldn't get the bandsaw in there, so I trimmed it with the shears, and now I'm just gonna use my nibbler to go right up the line. You'll notice it's kind of hard to see what I'm doing to the aluminum because this aluminum has the plastic on the top and bottom. So I think I need to peel that off to get a better look at the actual edge of the aluminum. Well, I figured I might as well peel this off now. It's on both sides. Peeling it off just lets me get a better look at the aluminum and a better look at the edges that I'm fouling and sanding. Well now it's time to clean up the rest of the edges. This is the instrument panel side and you can see there's a slight curve to the aluminum, but I can still file it smooth with my flat file. So I'll use the file to get it as smooth as I can and then you'll see in just a minute, I'll use the grinding wheel to smooth it out with a Scotch-Brite wheel. After the Scotch-Brite wheel, I use a piece of 320 grit sandpaper just to kind of smooth the edges, take the 90 degree corner off there, and just make it a nice smooth edge. All right, if you can tell, I've Clicoed the uh, original panel back on top of the one I made because since I had the plastic on here, that's where all my pen marks were. So I have to retrace these outlines here. But you can see, here's the part here that wraps around the tube. You can see I added about an extra half inch. You can see how nice this matches here. And this edge is all nice and cleaned up. It matches real nice here. Here's my extra half inch. Now on this edge and the front edge, here you can see how much I added to the, the firewall side. I sanded these down just to smooth them out so I don't cut my fingers or they don't scratch anything. But this edge and then the whole front and this edge, I didn't bother sanding with a file too, you know, really too well because I saw that on the original panel here, some of this is going to need trimmed a little bit. Um, so it's going to wind up getting cut down again anyway, and I'm sure that I'm going to have to cut some of this off. So again, all I did was sand this down to make it smooth, but I didn't put a lot of time in it making it perfect because I have a feeling I'm going to be slicing, well, maybe all of it off, but at least some of it off. So now that it's back on here, I'll retrace my lines and then I still need to, uh, to clean up all this in here. With this corner here, I actually used my nibbler for the lines and I have a little round file to kind of clean up the curve here. And once I got it as, as good as I could with the file, I used the grinder again to finish it off and give it a nice, real smooth uh, corner.
The new panel is officially done. All the uh, edges are smooth and everything. It's ready to install, but since I'm an old man and it's late, I'm going to bed. Well, you know I couldn't go to sleep without trying to fit this on. And I am very happy. It's, uh, it fits perfectly. You can see these pieces here that are a little bit longer. Uh, if I can kind of move the camera and show you. They might be a little bit too long, but it gives me enough material now to bend around this tube. And over in the front here, that just goes down like that. What I'll do is I'll put a drill a hole there and just work my way all the way around. And then when I get to the side, these pieces are already drilled to the big uh, thick longeron that goes here. So all I have to do is just match drill these, put the 530 seconds Clecos in there, and uh, this is done. And then also the front piece here, you can see how much uh, further it does stick out. So I'm sure once I get the cowling on here, I'll trim, who knows, it could be a good inch off of the front here, and that's okay but I'd rather have it too long than too short. So it gives me plenty of material to mount the cow. And then, uh, like I said, I can trim that. So everything fits great. Really happy with it. My new panel from Aircraft Specialty should be here probably by the time I get home from my next uh, airline trip. So I will be able to screw that or drill the holes to mount that. And then I can cut this panel out so lots of good things coming up here. Also, I have all of my brake lines on the way from Aircraft Specialty. And as I mentioned on a previous video, I'll be making a separate video on all of the brake lines. I'm going to show you uh, the brake system, how I mounted the single brakes, and I'm gonna start over and show you how I did the dual brakes. So I'll have the lines for both of those, uh, but that, that's on an upcoming video. Anyway, I think now that I have this uh, fit on here, it's time for bed. See you everybody.